I know this episode is about a week late, and I'm sorry about that. But these are the challenges we face when working in an analog medium sometimes. Long story short, it took time to develop these images, and they're just now getting here. So let's take a look at what we got. Last month's Star Trails test was something that inspired me to try more subjects on film outside of my comfort zone. Like maybe taking good pictures for once. So with the blue supermoon presenting itself less than a month after that outing, I figured why not ask the question, can a supermoon be captured on film? And the answer is, of course it can. How else did NASA take all those insanely sick pictures before I was even born? But we're not talking about NASA. We're talking about me. Can an idiot capture the moon on 35mm film? That's what we're going to find out today. Most people when shooting film use a method called Sunny 16, and I'm sure most of you have heard of it before, where you can measure a rough exposure of your film using the speed of your ISO as a base. But tonight I'd be using something different, but almost the same, a method called Looney 11. I have not done a ton of research, but it basically broke down to using an f-stop of 11 and shooting your shutter speed at the same ISO number as your film. Before sunset, I loaded up my main squeeze, the Nikon F2, with some HP5, which is a 400 speed ISO film. So that means using the Looney 11 theory, I'd be shooting at f11 and 1 400ths of a second, with the closest shutter speed being 500. God, I hate math. I've read online a lot of people like shooting the moon with something lower, like 100 or 200 speed of film, but we're gonna give old HP5 a try since I really liked the way my Joshua Tree shots turned out last month. A blue moon doesn't actually mean the moon will appear blue, but more two full moons within a month's time is rare, and the size of this one is even more rare, hence the phrase once in a blue moon. I'll be like 97 the next time one of these rolls around. But like I said before, I'm pretty bad at math. Plus, we're shooting in black and white, so yeah, no blue. As I scouted a few different locations around Morro Rock and used my night sky GPS to predict the moon's arrival, I noticed a small forest fire in the backcountry. It was pretty far away, but I hoped the smoke wouldn't get in the way of tonight's shot. And then, really all there was to do after that was wait. And I waited. So much so, that I got antsy and changed my position about three different times, before the moment actually happened. But when it did... We did get something. It's not perfect. And I wish we were able to capture more of the surrounding peaks and the stars in the background. But this actually perfectly highlights a common moon landing myth. People often ask when looking at the astronauts on the moon and that footage, why are there no stars? The exposure of this shot actually perfectly illustrates how depending on what you expose for and for how long determines what you can actually see. I took a longer exposure and you can clearly see in doing that, the moon looks more like a white streak across the sky since it's moving much faster than any of the stars due to the distance between the Earth. And it's not exactly something that works for me. I did take some Star Trail photos later that night. This first one is about 25 minutes, and the next one was a little over an hour. I liked the placement of the first shot much more, because the moon hadn't fully washed out the night sky yet with its massive glow. So back to our question. Can you photograph the moon on film? Yes. Should you? I'm not so sure I will again, but I sure learned a lot in this experiment. What I do know is, I wasn't done trying new things on this trip. So the next morning I got up before dawn and took this. The last sliver of the moon before it dipped back behind the horizon and the sun took it away. But taking pictures is not something you can always plan for. Sometimes it's about just being in the right place at the right time and being confident enough in your ability. I'm not always so lucky, but this morning I was. That fire I was talking about earlier lent itself in a way I wouldn't be able to predict. Something I couldn't have tracked on GPS or prophesized in any way with any of the greatest apps. But there it was, and I have the shot to prove it. And sometimes regardless of why you were there, proving it is enough. <laughs> 